Hello, this is Matt from Matt Heaney Apps and welcome to part one in our series covering all the basics of Swift Free. In this video, we will take a look at variables. So let's jump straight into Xcode. So let's jump into Xcode and we want to create a playground. So let's get started with a playground. We will name our playground variables. Make sure the platform is iOS and hit next and save it somewhere nice and safe. Okay, so we now have our playground set up and ready to go. So if this is your first time using an Xcode playground, basically what a playground is, is any code that we put over here on the left will give us instant results over here on the right. So it's a really good place to learn and to practice code concepts. So as you can see, we have here it says Hello Playground and instantly it is showing us Hello Playground over here on the right. Now if yours is not showing it over here on the right, give it a chance to load and when it's showing over here on the right, you're ready to go. But we are in fact going to get rid of this line just for now. So now we have a nice blank playground ready to play with. Okay, so like I said, in this video, we will take a look at variables. So what are variables and why do we need them? Well, in its most basic form of looking at it, coding is simply all about storing, changing and using data and information. Just about everything one way or another in coding can be broken down to this base information. And in apps and games, all we're doing is using this data to make our app work. So a variable is a way that we can store information. We can then use these variables to change information and we can then use this information as and when we need. Now there are loads of different types of information and data that we can use. And the way that we can use this information changes just a little bit depending on the type of information that it is. So we will take a look at four different types of variables. So therefore four different types of information. So let's have a look at our first kind of variable. And this is an integer. And an integer is a full number. So anything that we store as an integer will be a full number. So let's take a look at integers. And we will begin by declaring an integer. So the first time we store some information, we use the keyword var, short for variable. We then give this a name such as my int, and we can set it up. We'll say colon, we will say this will be an int, and we will say this will be set to 10. So we have now stored the full number 10 as my int. And as you can see, over on the right straight away, we are printing the number 10. Okay, so we have declared a brand new integer called my int, which has been set to 10. So a real life example of how we would use an integer would be for a score in a game. So we would say var score is an int and our score would be say 20. So now score is set to 20. So if we ever use or change score at the moment that is set to 20. Okay, so we have declared something new. We've told our code that we're going to set something brand new up. So remember score it's going to be of type integer, full number, and its starting value is 20. Now we haven't got to say int here. We could just say equals 20 because Xcode can figure out what kind of variable this is. But if you're just starting out, I recommend typing int in just to remember what they all are. Okay, so we've now stored some information as my int and score. So if we wanted to use this, if we just said score over here, it would tell us that score is 20. So we can now use score. We can also modify these. So we could say, for example, score now equals zero. It's the start of a game. Let's set it back to zero. Now note how we don't say var at the start of this because we've already set score up as an integer. So our code already knows what score is now. So we don't say var again. We only say var the first time we use it to declare it. So now we've updated the value of score. We can also modify it by adding to it by saying score plus equals one. So this will take whatever score currently is, zero, 
and it will add one to it. So as you can see, it is now one. We can take away, so minus equals two, it takes to one that it was, takes away two to give us minus one. So let's bump it up to say five, let's add six to it. We can times this by times equals say two. This will times it by two, so you can see we get 10. If we times it by three, times equals three, it would then put us on 15 and so on. And same thing with divide. So if we did divide equals five, it would divide score by five. So now we're manipulating the value of score. We can also use other integers to affect it. So we could say score plus equals my int, this guy from up here, which equals 10. So we're now saying take whatever score is and add whatever the value of my int is, which we know is 10. So as you can see, score is set to 12. So we set up an integer so we could access the value and we change the value in whatever way we wanted. So we're storing this number and changing it so we can use it however we want. So this is great for a full number, but sometimes this can cause a problem because score is currently set to 12. And if we took score and divided it by say five, it's going to give us the answer two. The answer should be two point whatever. But because integers are only full numbers, it's only give us a full number. So that's where we can use doubles. So doubles are numbers with decimal points. So for example, 10.2. So if you want a number with a decimal point, we would use a double. We can also use floats, but doubles can give you a more precise number. So we should use a double when we are dealing with numbers with decimal points. And we can do very similar stuff to doubles. So we can still add, we can still take away, we can still times, and so on. And you can see we're getting our results over here on the right straight away. So with an integer, we can store a full number. With a double, we can store a number with a decimal point. But what if we don't want to store a number? What if we want to store some words? Well, for that, we can use a string. And a string is a collection of characters. So it can be numbers, it can be letters, it can be special characters, and it can be emojis. So we can say var, we call it my string of type string. Again, just like above, we haven't got to say string here. It would figure out that we want a string, but it's good for practice to say what type you're dealing with. This is gonna equal, and for a string, we will have this in quotation marks. So we can type hello. So my string stores the value of this. So if we wanted my string, as you can see over here, it will tell us hello. So a real life example of this would be for the player's name. Okay, now just like with integers and doubles, we can add strings together. So what we could do is say my string plus equals player's name, and it will put these strings together. But as you can see, that's a bit of a mess. This is our outcome. So what we could do in this first string is get rid of the exclamation mark and have a space and it would format it correctly. But that's a bit of a hassle. You know, we don't really want to have this space here. So there is a better way of doing this. What we can do is make a new string, which is called, say, for example, Greek player. And if we, within a string, say backwards slash and between brackets, if we type a variable name in here, such as my string, this says take whatever my string is set to and include that in this string here. We can then do a space and another string, this time player name. So we're creating a new string using other variables. We can do the same thing with integers and doubles from above. So for example, we could have score here. So our message would say, hello, Matt two. So we could use something like, hello, Matt, your score is, hello, Matt, your score is two. So we put together variables into this string by using backwards slash and a variable name in brackets. So that's how we can store full numbers, numbers of decimal points and characters. Now the other variable type I want to look at are called booleans. And a boolean, often abbreviated to bool, can only be set to true 
or false. So for example, var should you subscribe would be set to true. Okay, so with booleans, we can only set it to true or false. So that is four different ways of storing and using information. We have integers, which are full numbers, doubles, which are numbers with a decimal point, strings, which can store characters, and booleans, which can store true or false. Now, sometimes we want to store information together, like grouped together. And for that, we can use tuples. And of a tuple, we can store two or more parts of information. So we can say var, and we call it my tuple. And this will be of type two integers. So in brackets, we will list integer, comma, integer. So my tuple will be made up of two integers. So this could be set to say 10 and five. So now we stored 10 and five together as the tuple. So how could this be used? Well, we could do, for example, my point on a map in a game, which takes two integers, which shows our two coordinates. So we are at point 1782. Okay, so that's where we are. So it makes sense to store them together. And to get access to these, we can take my point and we could say dot zero to get this one, as you can see 17, or dot one to get this one. So we're saying which part of my point do we want? But that's a bit of a hassle. So what we can do when we set up a tuple is we can give these names. So for example here, this could be our X point and this would be our Y point. So now we can take my point and say dot X and it'll give us 17, which is our first one, 17. If we said dot Y, give us our second one. So the tuple, we can store information together in a group. Okay, so there are just a few more quick things I want to show you. So let's take a look at the different ways we can declare how we're going to store this information. So let's take a look at var versus let. So, so far in this video, we have declared everything using var, which is short for variable, but we can also use let. There is quite an important difference between the two. So let's have a look. So we will do var, my var int of type int 10. We will now say let, and we just call it my let int of type int equals say 15. So we now have var and we have let. So what is the big difference? Well, var is variable and let is for a constant. So the big difference is that we can change and modify information when it's declared as a variable, but we cannot change and modify information when it's a constant. So for example, we can easily say my var int plus one. And because that is a variable, we can do that. But if we take my let int and try to add one, we'll get an error, which says we can't change it because it is a constant. We've pretty much said to our code, do not ever let us change the value of my let int. It will always, always be 15. We cannot change it. And we've then said, okay, now I want to change it. And Xcode is saying, well, hang about, you've just told me you never want to change it. So something's gone wrong somewhere here. It's pretty much saying either you do want to change it and this should be a var, or you're trying to change this when you shouldn't be trying to change it. Okay, so if it's a let, we can't change it. And we can use let for information that we know will never ever change in our apps or in our games. So say for example, we're making a game where you can shoot bullets. And if that bullet hits an enemy, it will do 10 lots of damage. Okay, so that amount of damage, 10, will never ever change. It will always be 10. So if we were to declare that as a constant with let, we could never change it because we want to make sure that always stays the same. Okay, so with let, we can lock information in and it will not let us change it. But with var variable, we can change it. So that is the difference between var and let. Okay, so the very last thing that I want to show you is type conversion. So say that we have two variables. We have the int of type int 
10 and VAR the double, because I'm running out of generic names for these, of type double 5.2. So if we try to add these together, it should work, right? So 10 plus 5.2 should be 15.2, but we can't do this. We can't add an int to a double because they're two different types. Now, what we can do is temporarily convert one of these numbers into the correct type so we can add it to the other variable. So for example, we could say, take the double and let's use an integer version of this. So this will take the double and for this usage, it would turn it into an int. That way we can add it to the int just like normal. However, this will equal 15 because when we turn the double into an int to use here, this becomes a full number. So we lose the point two and we just add 10 and five. So it's not really a correct answer. However, what we could do is convert the int into a double so we can add it to the double. So this would take 10 and for this usage, turn that into 10.0 so we can add it to 5.2. Okay, so what we can do, if we ever need two types to work together, we can temporarily convert it so we can use it. But be careful because doing this can lead to the wrong answer. So if you do have to do this, always double check because if we had turned the double into an int, it would work, but we'd get the wrong answer. But by turning the int into a double, it will work just as we want. So by simply taking a variable name and having it in brackets next to the type that we want it to be, it will temporarily for this one usage, turn it into that type so we can use it. And that wraps up our video taking a look at variables. If you have any questions at all, make sure to post them down in the comments. So as always, thank you very much for watching. If you liked watching this video, which I really hope you did, make sure to hit that like button, hit subscribe, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.